everybody. Morning. Welcome to worship this morning. Glad that you are here. Special word of welcome to you if you are here for the first time with us today. A special word of welcome to those of you who are joining us online today. Um, you'll see on your screen and here in the screens in the sanctuary this QR code. If you scan that code um, now or and it's around the sanctuary as well, that's your bulletin for the morning. And um, encourage you to do that so that um, there is information in the bulletin that does not get made in announcement times, so I encourage you to pick that up uh, to know more about what's going in this place we call faith. Uh, there will be communion as a part of this morning's worship service for, so for our online friends. We encourage you to get some bread and wine or grape juice and have that handy and uh, so that you can join us later. And please know that all are truly welcome at the table this morning. Our host family this morning is Laura Grone. Uh, she said, oh, she's way over there. You can see her. Um, she said she needs no introduction, which is partly true. <laughs> but uh, Laura, has, Laura is one of our staff and has been here longer than any of the rest of the present staff. So if Laura doesn't know you, you're new. And, um, but uh, thanks, Laura, for your help in the service today. Um, I think that that is it so uh, for pre-service announcements. So I invite you to uh, take breath, close your eyes if that's helpful to you, and um, center yourself in this place and this space this morning. I invite you to stand and join me in the call to worship. As we gather this morning, let us invite Jesus into our hearts to change them. Risen Christ, when a darkness overwhelms us, may your dawn beckon. When fear paralyzes us, may your touch release us. When grief 
torments us. May your peace enfold us. When memories haunt us, may your presence heal us. When apathy stagnates us, may your challenge renew us. When courage leaves us, may your spirit inspire us. When despair grips us, may your hope restore us. And when death threatens us, may your resurrection light lead us. Amen. So in the spirit of uh, keeping it real here this morning, so I came in this morning and uh, had a normal gathering with our worship team, shared some prayer requests, took up some good time talking about that, and then found out that the entire sound was. Messed up. <laughs> and uh, so then we got the soundboard working. We can find out that the slides never made. So it's been a bit hectic this morning. But as I was just sharing with Elbury, one of our singers down here, the reality of the situation is that it doesn't matter whether the soundboard works, it doesn't matter whether we have slides. Because God's still on the throne, amen? amen. We can still have a worship service, the lights don't work, and the soundboard's a challenge, you know. Because God doesn't need technology to do that. So I just ask that we remember that today.
Forget everything else. One of the great gifts that we have to share with one another is the gift of God's peace, a peace that is based in who our God is, not in the circumstances of today. And so we're going to take a few moments to share God's peace with one another and encourage you to remember that the person receiving the peace from you gets to decide how to receive it. And um, and so if you go in for the hug and they go like this, you know, you do that little awkward thing and then you just shake hands. For um, our friends online, I encourage you to share God's peace with those um, who are with you this morning. But for everybody, we always encourage you to take out your phone, whether you're um, online or in person and uh, share God's peace with somebody who might not be physically with you today. And so I say to you this morning, may the peace of the Lord be with you always. Also with you. Will you please take a few moments to share God's peace with one another? Give 
have you? They answered him. He said to them, cast the net to the right side of the boat and you will find some. So they cast it and now they were not able to haul it in because there were so many fish. That disciple Jesus loved said to Peter, it is the Lord. When Simon Peter heard that it was the Lord, he put on some clothes naked and he jumped into the sea. But the other disciples came in the boat, dragging the net full of fish, for they were not far from the land, only about a hundred yards off. When they had gone ashore, they saw a charcoal fire there, with fish on it and bread. Jesus said to them, 
bring some of the fish that you have caught. Simon Peter went aboard and hauled the net ashore, full of large fish, 153 of them. And though there were so many, the net was not torn. Jesus said to them, come and have breakfast. Now, none of the disciples, disciples dared to ask him, who are you? Because they knew it was the Lord. Jesus came and took the bread and gave it to them and did the same with the fish. When they had finished breakfast, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? He said to him, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said to him, feed my lambs. A second time he said to him, Simon, son of John, do you love me? He said to him, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said to him, tend my sheep. He said to him the third time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter felt hurt because, because he had said that to him the third time, do you love me? And he said to him, Lord, you know everything. You know that I love you. Jesus said to him, feed my sheep. He is risen. He is risen Sounds good. I do that to remind us that Easter isn't a one and done kind of thing, but that Easter is a celebration that lives on, actually should live on every day. So we'll keep celebrating. Well, last week, last week we heard Thomas's story. And that he really, I don't think, should be called Doubting Thomas because all he did was ask for what everybody else had already had. But also that Jesus says our faith is what will let us see. So we have to choose to believe in order that we might see. Change that sight into faith. This week, this week we get Peter. I love Peter. He's one of the first disciples that are called. He is the first of the disciples to proclaim Jesus as Messiah, the son of the living God. When uh, he does this, when early on, when Jesus asks who people are saying that he is, Peter, whom Jesus proclaims, you will be the rock upon which I will build my church. Peter, whom Jesus also says to get behind me, Satan, not that far apart either. Peter, who is often chosen with James and John to be the only ones to go with Jesus to special places like the Hill of Transfiguration and into the Garden of Gethsemane. Peter, the impetuous, quick to answer, quick to be all in, quick to be all out, quick to change his mind. You'll not wash my feet. You'll not wash any part of me. Wait, wait, really? Okay, now wash me all, not just my feet, right? Peter who disowns even knowing Jesus three times. Peter. He was with Jesus from the get-go. He saw the miracles and the healings. He heard the teaching. Could be said that Peter might have been one of Jesus' favorites. Peter. On Easter morning, can't believe the women's stories and runs to the grave for see for himself and then leaves wondering. What has happened? And he goes home. Who is this Peter? Seems like he maybe takes one step forward and two steps back. He's all over the place. One minute he's at the front of the pack. The next minute he's denying that he ever even knew Jesus. Peter, he's so us. After claiming Jesus as Messiah, after being with him for three years, Peter denies ever knowing Jesus, and he knows that Jesus knows. Can you imagine being Peter? In that moment, the shame, the fear, the loss, the heartbreak, like it all came down on him in a moment. What can he do now? An Easter morning, Jesus is clearly not in the tomb, but what happened? Where is he? What's going to happen next? Peter is confused. 
His last encounter with Jesus couldn't really be counted as a success. He saw Jesus die, laid in a tomb. Life, as he knew it, seems to be over. So what does he do? What we would do, he goes back to what he knows, back to the familiar. I mean, what do we do when the world seems upside down? What do you do when things seem out of control, when, when we failed, when we don't understand? We go back to what we know. We go back to places that feel safe. Sometimes we cling to what we know, to what feels good, what feels right. It's not always a bad thing, but Jesus shows up to show Peter and us that he is not done with Peter and he is not done with us. Peter, Peter on that morning was gathered with Thomas. Notice he's not called Doubting Thomas in this text, just to point that out. He's with Thomas, Nathaniel, James, John, and two others. <clears throat> I wonder what those two others feel like. Everybody else got a name. <laughs> two others, right? But Peter says, hey, I'm going fishing. And, and the rest of them are like, hey, I'm going to go too. Now, seriously, they haven't really been fishing in about three years, right? But they fished all night. And they caught nothing. And Jesus stands on the beach and he yells out to them. You know, it sounds so good in the Bible. You have not caught anything, have you? Like he's shouting out, hey, you don't have anything in your boat, do you? You didn't catch any fish last night. And the disciples are like, who's that guy on the beach? Right? And the disciples are like, no. And Jesus says, cast your nets on the other side. Now, do you ever wonder about the conversation that then happened in the boat? It's like, these are the things that I wonder about. Scripture tells us the disciples didn't know it was Jesus on the beach. So they're saying, who is this guy? And why should we do what he says? They go, uh, okay, let's humor him. We'll toss the nets over on the other side. We know what's going to happen. But, but they do, and then the unexpected happens. And they get so many fish, they can't haul the net in. And they realize in that moment, again, in a miraculous moment, it's Jesus. It's a miracle. And they decide, this has to be Jesus. That's how they know him, the miracle worker, the healer, the teacher. Now, here again is another interesting bit that the Bible tells us. Peter. He puts clothes on to jump into the water. Like, do we really need to know that Peter is naked in the boat? Like, I, you know, there are all kinds of details that I want to know. I'm not sure that one was, you know, scripture worthy, but it made it. So Peter has no clothes on. He puts clothes on. He jumps into the water and uh, he gets to shore and eventually everybody else does. And they have breakfast with Jesus. What was the breakfast conversation? Like, did they chit-chat? Hey, Jesus, what's it like being dead? Do you still get hungry now? Do you need food? Hey, nice new robes, Jesus. You're looking pretty good for a guy who was dead for three days. Right? Or were they silent? Nobody daring to really speak. These are the things I want to know. But soon enough, breakfast is over, and Jesus turns to Peter. I wonder if Peter was dreading this moment. It's his first really face-to-face -face with Jesus where they can really talk, and Jesus asks, Do you love me, Peter, more than these? Love me more than these. We, we often skip over that little phrase and we go right to the feed my sheep, tend my sheep, feed my lambs thing. But what are the these Jesus is referring to? Peter went back to the familiar, the comfortable, the smell of the water, the creak of the boat, the feel of the net as he cast it out, the feel of fish in that net. It's all very familiar routines, very familiar senses, right? What if Jesus is asking, do you love me more than these, the familiar, the safe, the ordinary unfolding of daily routine? Do you love me more than these kinds of days? Do you love me enough to let how I want your life to unfold be the guide, Jesus? I think Jesus is asking. 
Do you love me enough to leave behind the known, the familiar? Do you love me enough to do the work of Easter? Feeding lambs, tending sheep, looking out for little ones, young ones, those young in faith, looking out for the ones who need a guide, an authentic friend, looking out for those who have wandered, those who are hurt or lost or in need. Do you love me enough, Jesus says. And fortunately for us and so many others, Peter says, yes. But the work of Easter isn't over. And Jesus asks the same question of us today. Do you love me enough to let go of the familiar routines of life and embrace where I am calling? Do you love me enough to let me be the guide of your life? Do you love me enough to be on mission with me, not just trying to fit me into what you want to do? Do you love me enough to feed lambs, to tend sheep, to look out for the little ones, those young and those young in faith? Do you look out for the ones who need a guide, an authentic friend, to look out for those who have wandered, for those who are hurt or lost or in need? What will our response be? Will we, will you, will I stick to the familiar routines, the ways of doing things, staying safe and comfortable? We answer, yes, Lord. Lord, you know that I love you. But still we want to do our own thing. Or will we answer, yes, Lord, you know I love you and actually follow where he leads. Go where he sends. Dare to try something different for the sake of sheep and lambs who need to know the love of Jesus. Peter's answer that day could have taken him back to safety or forward into mission with Jesus. Our answer, your answer, my answer today has the power to do the same. Will we go back or forward? When Jesus says, do you love me? And we say, Jesus, you know I love you. His answer is still the same today. Tend my lambs, feed my sheep. Will you pray with me? Lord Jesus, I will confess there are many times when I say, yes, Lord, you know that I love you, but I'd really like to tend your sheep and feed your lambs when it's convenient or when I feel like doing it. I, too, like the familiarity of routine at times. And I, too, get scared when you call us to places that I don't really know where you're calling. Or you call me to step out into something I'm not sure I can do. But, Lord, as we look at Peter and ourselves today, isn't that what we're called to do? Step into the places we don't know and choose to believe that you're going to meet us there because you are already there? Holy Spirit, I pray that you will give us wisdom and discernment and courage and power as we step forward. Power to help lives change so that they know you, the risen Lord. I pray this in your name and in your power, Jesus. Amen. Would you all stand with us? You know, I, I think Jason Gray, who wrote this next song, is a brilliant songwriter. But if I were to have a conversation with him, which will never happen, um, I think he should change the title from Remind Me Who I Am to Remind Me Whose I Am. Go. When I lose my way 
And I forget my name. Remind me who I am. In the mirror, all I see is who I don't want to be. Remind me who I am. In the loneliest places. When I can't remember what grace is. Tell me. Once again, who I am to you, who I am to you, oh, tell me, lest I forget who I am to you, I belong to you, to you. My heart is like a stone, I'm running far from home, remind me who I am. When I can't receive your love, afraid I'll never be enough, remind me who I am. If I'm your beloved, can you help me believe it? Tell me once again who I am to you, who I am to you. Oh, tell me lest I forget who I am to you. I belong to you. Cause I'm the one you love. I'm the one you love. And that will be enough. I'm the one you love. Tell me once again who I am to you. Who I am to you, oh, tell me, lest I forget who I am to you, I belong to you, to you. As we remember whose we are, we also have the privilege today of being able to proclaim who God is. And so I invite you to join me now in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. As we proclaim who God is, we also hear his invitation to come to this table, a table that is filled with mercy and grace and forgiveness and welcome. And so as we prepare to come this morning for our friends online, I invite you to have one person um, in your space this morning be uh, the communion uh, elements holder, and um, you can hold your elements as we hold the elements here um, in the sanctuary. And then I invite you all to join me in saying these words that remind us of the depth of this meal. On the night Jesus showed his greatest love for us, he took a piece of bread, gave thanks for it, blessed it, broke it, 
and gave it to his disciples, says, gives it to us today, saying, take and eat. For this is my body given for you. Whenever you eat of this bread, do it and remember me. And then I invite you to lift up your wine or grape juice and join us as we continue. After supper, he took a cup of wine, gave thanks for it and blessed it, and gave it to his disciples as he gives it to us today, saying, take and drink. For this is the new promise in my blood, shed for you and all people, for the forgiveness of all your sins. Whenever you drink from this cup, do it and remember me. And as we remember and as we prepare to come, then I invite you to pray with me the prayer Jesus prayed. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. You may be seated. For our friends online, I invite you to share the elements with one another using words such as, this is the body of Christ given for you. This is the blood of Christ shed for you. If there's somebody um, in your space this morning that doesn't take communion, I invite you to um, bless them with some words of blessing. It can be as simple as remember Jesus loves you or words that feel um, right for you this morning. For those of you here in the sanctuary, we will have two stations here in the front. Ushers will help you get to the center aisle. Come forward, you'll get a little squirt of hand sanitizer, and then you'll receive the bread. And the next station is the wine and grape juice in small cups. Um, wine is darker and on the outside of the tray. Grape juice is lighter and on the inside. Once you have your, your grape juice or wine, you partake of it. And then there are trash cans on either side. Just drop the empty cup in there. Um, if you are young and you take communion in particular, um, put your hands out like this. That helps the servers know that you get to take communion. Um, and if of any age, if you choose to not, um, just simply place your hands across your chest. We do invite you to come forward, whether you plan to take or not, so we can give you a word of blessing as well. Um, this is God's table, and therefore it is welcome and open to all. It does not matter what your church background is if you don't have any at all. If you believe in the love of Jesus and desire his love in your life, you are welcome to come this morning. And so I invite you all, friends, come eat, drink, and be fed with the bread of life. Well, here I am, river of questions. Can I pour my heart out to a listening ear? I see this life, its valleys and mountains, and I think of all the road brought me here. Oh, they brought me here. Walking down, walking down that road. Well, I've questioned my reasons this life I'm living. I've questioned my ability to judge wrong from wrong. I've questioned all the things I've ever called certain. My race, my religion, my country, my mind. But the one thing I don't question is you. You really love me like you say you do. You really love me like you say you do. 
Sometimes on this journey, I get lost in my mistakes. What looks to me like weakness is a canvas for your strength. My story isn't over, my story's just begun. Still you won't define me, cause that's what my father does. Still you won't define me, cause that's what my father does.
the important part. Prodigals come home, the help is find home. Love is on the move, and the Father's in the room. The prison doors swing wide, the dead come to life. Love is on the move, and the Father's in the room. Miracles, come on! Miracles take place, the cynical find Love is breaking through, and the Father's in the room. The Jericho walls are quaking, struggles now are shaking. Love is breaking through when the Father's in the room. Love is breaking through when the Father's in the room. We should all be so excited. May the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen us and keep us in his grace. Amen. You know, almost every time um, that I am the host home, something pops into my eyes just right before I'm supposed to create a prayer. So this came on my neighbor's Facebook page the other day. It is from Glennon Doyle, and it's for the Soul Sisters Memorial Foundation. If you are standing with other women in a circle, and, and there is a woman standing alone in your circle's vicinity, the thing to do is notice her, smile at her, move over a bit, and say, hi, come join us. Even if she decides not to join you, even if she looks at you like you're crazy, inviting her is still the thing to do. Widen your circles all the time. Also, horseshoes are better than circles. Leave space. Always leave space. Horseshoes of friends are greater than circles of friends. Life can be lonely. Stand in horseshoes. And today, Lord, we continue to pray for our brothers and sisters in the Ukraine. We pray for your protection for our whole world, for our golden and our faith community. Be especially with those in grief, sadness, and illness. We know you are always with us, so open our hearts to be open to you. Amen. I might have to steal that from you. Just a few announcements before we go today. Um, the health ministries team is doing blood pressure checks this morning in the office. And so if you would like to have your blood pressure, it might not be the best thing for you this morning. <laughs> no. um, if you would like your blood pressure checked this morning, you just stop in the office and they would be glad to help you. Um, and then we have Deanne. Oh, there we go. Deanne's got a couple announcements for us too. She 
All right. <laughs> okay. Uh -huh. That's right. That's right. I need you to remember me. So, uh, so I'm Deanne Lord. I'm the children's ministry leader here. Um, uh, lots of new faces around here, so I want to make sure everybody knows who I am. Um, we have one of the most exciting, incredible weeks coming up this summer. It's our kids camp. The week of, all right, come on. Oh, that was so weak. Come on. Oh, there we go. Yeah. Like kids camp. That's right. It was. It's July 18th through the 22nd. And if you're not familiar with our kids camp, that is our vacation Bible school. And this week is near and dear to me um, for many reasons. Um, I was an, an unchurched kid, but I was sent to vacation Bible school. And I truly, truly, truly believe in um, the power of those seeds being planted in our lives. Um, we have seeds being planted in our lives um, uh, constantly. Um, you know, that faith journey is something that doesn't have a, you know, it has a beginning, but I, I don't believe that it has an end. We're always on that journey. So um, I think Vacation Bible School is one of those biggest, biggest seeds that can be planted in, in um, our young people's lives. And again, um, if you've not been around here before for Kids Camp, it's safe to say it's probably one of the wildest, most craziest weeks. Um, we actually have a kids camp band. They're the hottest ticket, Woo! wouldn't you say? Yeah, in the summer, yes. Um, so um, our kids camp will probably have close to 300 kids this year, which is back up to those numbers that we saw pre-pandemic, which really excites me. Um, we have about 150 kids registered so far, and it is May 1. So um, that uh, tells me that um, uh, families and kids are, are ready to be jumping into things again. So, But we cannot serve 300 kids for that week without a lot of prayer and a lot of help. And for about 300 kids, we need about 150 people to make that happen. So, um, and that sounds like a lot, um, and it is, but it's amazing what this community does and how they step up um, to the plate with this. If you've ever volunteered for Kids Camp in any way, shape, or form, physically that week, the weeks leading up to anything whatsoever, raise your hand. Raise them up high. And if you look around, it's people of all ages that help with our kids camp. And there is something for everybody to do. Um, if you don't wanna work directly with kids, that's just fine. We've got things that you can do to help us prepare for things. We have an entire set. Oh, there it went. <laughs> you know, hold the cactus. Over. We have an entire set that will be built on this stage. And it's not wimpy. It's um, it's it's pretty crazy because I have some very talented people that gift us with their um, uh, with their gifts. And um, I just say, hey, we need cactuses and rocks and monuments and stuff. And it's amazing what's going to happen to this building. Um, and so if you're if you like to do those kinds of things, um, if you like to help prep materials, if you'd like to um, work directly with kids, anything whatsoever, um, the registration. Um, there's a QR code on the screen. If you're not a QR code person, go to Faith's website, faithgolden.org, and on the home page there is a link. The link is the same for kids registration and volunteer registration. So you um, click on that link on the home page, and then when you get in there, there's a volunteer spot. And even if you can't be here the week of, but you'd like to help in any way, shape or form, please register because that way I've got you in my, um, you know, in my connection. So I know to reach out to you and figure out how you'd like to help. Um, and then I just want to um, share with you that we are going to have our Joshua Station kids back again this year, which is fantastic. We didn't have them the last two years. And um, those of you who are unfamiliar with Joshua Station, it's a transitional housing program that is in Denver. And we've had a relationship for them for many, many years. And I am going down there next week and we're going to be registering 
bring kids to get on vans. We go pick them up. We rent vans and we pick them up and bring them here for the week and camp is free for them. We provide them their lunches and everything. And it's really, really an amazing, amazing relationship um, to get, you know, to um, give those kids an opportunity to spend the week with us. So we're really excited to have them back. Um, and then speaking of that, um, next week you will, there'll be a big display out um, in the lobby and it'll be up for several weeks, but there'll be slips of paper that you'll be able to grab and it's stuff. Um, kids camp needs stuff. We need Ziploc bags and we need cotton balls and we, you know, all kinds of stuff. Um, the other thing we need is donations to help us rent our vans, um, scholarships. Um, I actually do feel like we're going to need more scholarships this year. It's $45 for a kid to attend our camp and that's nine to one. So it's four hours a day for the week. And um, I have already had about eight families with kids anywhere from two to four, two kids up to four kids um, le letting me know that they need scholarships. And that's already um, almost what we normally have in a year. And I think just with the economy and, and the way things are going on and what's happened the last couple of years, we, we, the need's going to be a little bit higher. So that's another way that you can give is to... Um, uh, um, scholarship some of those kids to help us with our expenses for that. So um, I am available out in the lobby. I'm also going to be helping Cherry with some stuff, but I'm available in the lobby if anyone has any questions. My email um, is always um, a good way to get a hold of me, and I do respond quickly to that. So, um, but I just say thank you, thank you for helping us make Kids Camp one of the greatest weeks for the kids in this community. Thank you. So uh, two quick questions. We do let the Joshua Station kids go home at night. We do take them home. Okay, because you said we bring them out here and they're here for the week. And I thought, just, you know, that. And, and, um, and then for those of our friends who are online, will you have a listing online too that they can get stuff from? that's a good idea. I will figure out how to make it. Okay, so if you're online with us today and want to help out with Kids Camp, um, then we will make sure that we have online possibilities for you as well. And the mantra of Kids Camp, besides being the best week ever, is if even if you don't like kids, there's a place for you at Kids Camp. So, um, uh, Relay for Life, Cancer Support, Cherry, there she comes. So Cherry has been on mission for ever, um, I, as long as I've known you. With, uh, uh, with the Cancer Society. And uh, she and Carolyn have some things for us this morning too. Hi. <laughs> Deanne and I are working together because I volunteer with Kids Camp and she's helping me this morning with a kickoff for our virtual Relay for Life. We're asking everyone to donate to our team, Faith Golden, for our virtual relay. We'll be out in the lobby today asking for your donations. You can give through your credit card or PayPal on our computers. We have three computers set up to help you do that, or you can do it at home if you stroll through the uh, prompts that we've given you on e-news and in the bulletin. Um, you can also just write a check and we'll mail those in. It takes a little longer for it to get processed, but it will be processed and we thank you for that. If you don't like dealing with money, our checks and emails, you can give us cash and we would appreciate that as well. You know, it all spends and the, the reason for this cancer support ministry that Carolyn and I have set up is to help researchers to find cures and new treatments to help get rid of all cancers that are so terrible. One of the reasons why I'm involved with Relay for Life and have been is because I heard those terrible words, you have cancer, 43 years ago. 
and it's been a blessing to me after the shock um, because it's brought me to love so many people that are going through that terrible situation of having been told they have cancer and have to go through some kind of treatment. And sometimes the treatment's worse than the cancer. But since 1994, the American Cancer Society, through their generous donations of people that support them, has dropped the death rate from cancers by 31%, which is amazing. And their goal is to get rid of it totally. And the researchers that are funded by the money that you give are doing amazing things. They're finding treatments from other diseases that work on cancer. And so I have faith that soon we will eliminate the dreaded cancer. The other thing that our cancer support ministry is doing, and this was in the newsletter and um, also in the bulletin, is we're providing a survey, quick one, five questions is all we're asking. But we want to know how we can help you or your friends that are dealing with cancer in any way how we can be helpful. We can decide what you might need, but it may not be what you really need. And so if you fill out this survey, and it's anonymous, um, it's online as well under the Survey Monkey. Um, we also have some hard copies that will be at the door. Um, to give to you um, to fill out. And there's a box on the ledge in, uh, by the window over the office. And you can just drop that hard copy in there. It will help us know how we can better serve you by being the hands and feet of Jesus as you're walking through um, your cancer journey. The other thing is, um, on May 15th, we are going to honor all cancer survivors and caregivers for those survivors or for somebody that's already passed. If you've been a caregiver for anybody that's gone through cancer, we want to recognize you during the service on uh, May 15th. So please plan to come. Um, also, if you know somebody in your family or a neighbor who has been a, a survivor or a caregiver, invite them to come. We'd like to celebrate them as well. And you can get in touch with Carolyn Jazz or myself and um, give us the names of anybody that we don't know is a survivor or a caregiver, so we can have them be included in our service. Thank you. So again, Cherry and Carolyn are out in the lobby. And um, Cherry, I just want to say, is a testament not only to perseverance in cancer, but in learning how to do technology as well. So way to go, Cherry. <laughs> Uh, quick reminder that the annual celebration is tonight, 5 p.m. here. Uh, we have Qdoba for supper, and uh, and then we're going to have some time of celebration and vision after that. Uh, there is uh, child care available, and during the uh, kind of adultish part of the meeting, like where we have to do a few um, uh, business items, uh, that there is a uh, care for, there's going to be a movie for up through elementary age-ish. So um, it is for the whole family, and, um, and so we really wanted to see you here tonight. And so uh, even, we ordered a little extra, so if you didn't sign up, you can still come. 
And then also on May 15th is a time of listening and reflection around the vision that the staffing council have been working on um, incredibly hard over the last five months. And so um, that'll be right after worship on the 15th. And so invite you to come to that. You'll hear a snippet tonight, but you'll hear more on the 15th. Um, that's it. So Laura, you want to, yep, come Benedict us. Well, first of all, I want to say, if it's an adult portion of Mexican food, there must be margaritas. <laughs> there is somewhere. <laughs> Just not here. Just, Just not, not here. here. <laughs> okay, for the benediction. May the peace of the Lord be in your heart. The grace of God be in your words. May the love of God be in your hands. The joy of God be in your soul and in the song your life sings today and every day. Amen. <clears throat> Man, we have some cool people in this congregation. <laughs> Come thou fount of every blessing, tune my heart to sing thy grace. Streams of mercy never ceasing, call for songs of loudest praise. Teach me some melodious sonnet, sung by flaming tongues above. Praise the mount I fixed upon it, mount of thy redeeming love. Here I raise my Ebenezer, hither by thy help I come. Okay, wait a minute, I just got to stop for a second. Huh? How many people know what an Ebenezer is? Are you guys picturing a small, skinny, bald man that you're raising right now in your head? Okay, just so you know, it's actually a rock. It was used, it's a biblical reference to a rock that was put when the people crossed over the Jordan River. That was the name of the rock. Okay, so now you can have that in your head and not a skinny, bald man. Here we go. Here I raise, raise my Ebenezer, hither by thy help I come, and I hope. Good pleasure safely to arrive at home. And Jesus sought me when a stranger, wandering from the fold of God, here to rescue me from danger, interpose his precious blood. Come thou found, come thou king. Come, thou precious Prince of Peace, hear your bride to you we sing. Come, thou fount of our blessing. Go. Oh, to grace, how great a debtor, daily I'm constrained to be. Let thy goodness, like a feather, bind my wandering heart to thee. Prone to wander, Lord, I feel it. Prone to leave the God I love. Here's my heart, oh, take and seal it. Seal it for thy courts Come thou found, come thou king, come thou precious prince of peace. Hear your bride to you we sing. Come thou found of One more time, do it again. Come thou found, come thou king, come thou precious prince of peace. Hear your bride to you we sing. Come the fount of our
Everybody have a great week. God bless. Come back tonight for the celebration. We'll look forward to seeing you then.